Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new our take on Hollyoaks for Hollyoaks later. Joining me today, we have Ashley and Corian. Hey, guys. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm so excited to finally sit here and talk about the thing we've been looking forward to for over a year. End of Brita. <laughs> so excited to finally sit here and talk about the thing we've been looking forward to for over a year, and that's oh. the end of Brita. <laughs> it God. is finally here and finally over. Uh, so, I think the cool thing about this episode of our take it will be we're just focusing only on Hollyoaks later so we're not Ooh. focusing on anything that's happened previously or anything that's happened you know through the west rest of this week we're just talking about this one episode because there's a lot to dissect here and i'm just really excited to talk about so i guess first off what was your guys overall impressions of Hollyoaks later you go first, Ashley. This was your first Exactly. Later. This was my first one, so I didn't really know what to expect. Um, the way you guys kind of explained it is just, it's like, you know, regular episode, except it's a little bit more, you know, ramped up, maybe a little bit more violent, maybe a little bit more, uh, you know, they get a little bit, go a little bit further with love scenes sometimes. Maybe they even drop a couple curse words here and there. Um, so that's what I was expecting. That's not exactly what I got, but <laughs> I could tell the difference. I could tell that there were some things that they did um, in that episode that they would not have done in a normal episode. I know Liam dropped the bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> he said bullshit. Uh, the <laughs> so naturally too. The death, the death scene with Brita was probably a little bit more <sighs> violent than it would have been otherwise. Also, the uh, the rake or whatever the hell that that pitchfork thing that was a little ugh gross. But overall, also it was really really fast paced, and that's saying a lot because Hollyoaks in general is fast paced. But I felt like this one was like on turbo charge. So I mean, I liked it. I did. It wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be. Like I, I thought, I, I thought it was going to be what I expected this year's uh, or last year's now. Um, stunt, stunt week. week to be, and it was. It was just. It was a little bit dialed back, but I still enjoyed it. Nice. Yeah, I would say. I would say the same thing. I've seen a few later stints of my own, and it was definitely a little more dialed down than it's been before. Like, I don't know if you remember John when Harry first came back. Like, he came mm -hmm. back and he was cussing like fucking crazy, dropping just f bombs and everything everywhere, and it was just way more subdued. But it was, like Ashley said, though, it was different. You could tell it was a different entity. Like, it looked different. It moved yes. differently. And it was it was just really enjoyable. It was kind of, it was like watching a movie, you know? 100%. And it kind of, I don't know how to word it, but it, it did feel different. Like, it felt the essence of Hollyoaks. But you could tell in the way it was shot, the way it was edited, the the way the score was. Um, the way it visually looked, like it looked beautiful, um, and it just was overall just a really good episode. I don't know necessarily. See, when I think Hollywood's later, Corian, I think of like a special week, right? I think of you know a grouping of episodes telling a narrative of story. This kind of felt like just like a special late night episode. But yeah. not necessarily Hollywood's later, so it's just kind of a branding thing. But either way, like I really enjoyed this episode, and it had a lot to do with the characters that they chose to play, and the way all of these stories kind of interwove together. And I think they did it in a very smart uh, manner. Um, but do you breed it with that pitchfork? <laughs> that thing gave me nightmares. For sure. So I'm just happy that somebody finally beat her ass. Thank God. Silver uh, finally took this eighty pound woman, this four foot eleven woman, and just put her aside. I was like, thank God. 
<laughs> so let's talk about that. What what did you guys think of, I guess, Brita's end arc there? Um, so it was really Goldie and uh, Silver kind of tracked them all down to that pig farm. They went there finally after, you know, a year of just not questioning this old lady going back and forth. Mm, that's what drove me up a wall. I'm sitting here like, we have dealt with a year of this bitch being batshit crazy, and nobody can figure it out. John Paul shows up, and after mm-hmm. five minutes, he's like, she's a serial killer. Why aren't you listening to me paying attention? Like, I, I was so, like, wait well, a minute. Well, it helps that he caught her in the uh-huh. act of yeah. evidence. She's been caught in the act of doing so many other things and have been able True. to talk her way out of it. It's the but- dementia. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I hope we don't ever have to see that pig farm again. I really. Don't. Oh, I, I hope that it's now burned to the ground and we just never mention it again. But I love the fact that our John Paul came in with a fresh set of eyes and it was like, you know what? This old lady's crazy, and she's killing folk. Like, mm-hmm. okay, but can we also give credit to the real homegirl Boldy, <laughs> who also figured it out too? She put two and two together, and she was like, wait a minute. No, oh, we all the found... same dolls. Literally everyone yeah. in the world yeah. had fucking dolls. She was like, hold on. I had this doll when my dad died. What oh the fuck? God. Like, it, it, it was, it was kind of silly because, like, these were things that were so glaringly obvious. <laughs> but, like, I think also it, it kind of shows, like, what we've talked about with Hollywoods before. Like, all of these people live in the same village and, like, sometimes they have stories that interact, but, like, a lot of times they don't. Like, we'll see characters in, like, the background of other people's scenes and, like, that's really, like, the only interaction we get. So, like, in a way, I could I could kind of understand why, you know, Bobby never saw Curtis's doll that he, you know, that they had the same doll because, you know, Grace and Mercedes hated each other. Their kids weren't on play dates, you know, shit like that. Um, but also I was still kind of like, this is stupid. Y'all should have figured this out way before. <laughs> also, I have to say, DS Cohen is the dumbest bitch on the planet. No. She is so stupid. So she stupid. has gotten it wrong more times <laughs> than not. Like, is that no- we used to think he was so like you know, as soap operas of just having dumb cops. Now I see that it's just a soap opera staple no matter where you are. <laughs> yes. All the Wait. cops have to be dumb. <laughs> this is actually this is literally a thing with Hollyoaks. They have the oh, dumbest God. detectives who come on and they'll be murdered in two years, so it's fine. That's but, true. <laughs> but, John Paul was like, you didn't even know Louis Loveday. What are you talking about? Well, well, what I think is that they must have been, had, you know, a romantic relationship, but she got ju- I was like, girl. Right. What? what? One plus one doesn't equal two. Like those two in a scene together. <laughs> right. You you were reaching very 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 far. And why would she kill Glenn? Like the whole I, I, and then they didn't even bring up Mac. Everybody wanted no, to kill Mac. Everybody Nobody, wanted him dead. Everybody you know, <laughs> they didn't care. Marnie was sitting right there. And she was like. Mm. <laughs> And then okay. she had an alibi for when Darren got shanked. So uh-huh. I'm like, is she not putting any of this together at all? Right. Uh, I must no. have been unrelated. It's fine. Like what? <laughs> How? Oh God. My gosh. Just, it was um, just nice to see everyone just figure this out. Just just put all the holes in this crazy old lady's plot and save the day, basically. <laughs> How many people has she murdered? Oh god. Like total ten, right? Oh. She's been on the show, or <laughs> because she oh, well, committed to a lot of other ones. When they were having that discussion in the house on the pig farm, it sounded like she was admitting to having bodies all over that place that had all nothing over. to do with Hollyoaks. Like before she even got there, like I was like, wait a she minute. Got, she got Silver's dad. She got Goldie's dad. She got, she got her own dad. She got her own dad. She got <laughs> Carl. She got um. Louis, she got Harry. Glenn, Mac. Who else? Harry. Who's that? Is it Harry. Oh, Harry. I thought you said Harry. 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 So we're at eight right now. She got hmm. what's his name? Um, Russ. Oh yeah. So nine. So nine known victims. <laughs> <laughs> and we finally cracked the case Jesus. and got rid of her. It was just like, and like I said before, like it was, it was kind of like watching a movie. It was just like this, like 
like even though we had known it and it was so obvious like just seeing the build up to like the the climax was really fun to watch I feel like like I was like actually on the edge of my seat yeah that's the one thing I'll say that was different between this episode and the other one hour episodes that they've done that I've seen is that this actually felt like it played out like a movie like this didn't feel like just a longer episode yeah this was like I was just like oh wait hold on what's going on I like yeah, it. It was, it was so it was so like like atmospheric. I feel like yeah. like it felt like. Do you remember how the the Louis episode when she had him, you know, captive, and it felt so much like a horror movie. Like this felt that's, like a thriller horror movie kind of hybrid. Louis, he was going through that goddamn <sighs> thing in that wheelchair trying to hide himself. Like you can't hide a wheelchair. Uh, but if Hollyoaks yeah. ain't got ain't got nothing else, they got money. And that as I was <laughs> watching, I was like, wow. They have money. They blew up that <laughs> whole farm. <laughs> Ooh. 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 <laughs> Boom. The entire farm. <laughs> I think uh Oh, go ahead, John. No, you're fine. I was just gonna say like another like just going off the you know what we're gonna talk about next, so when Walter has a vigil, I really love oh, that was amazing. getting Lisa's reaction to everything. Yes. Um, because again, like we talked about, if shit happens to black people on other shows, we would never get any sort of emotional beats to it. Mm-hmm. But Lisa has been a constant in this story, and like having her, you know, find the ring and then be the one to like, you know, get angry and get upset. Because like a lot of people so far have just been complacent lately. Because they're just like, oh, it's a serial killer out there. We'll be all right. Exactly. But, like, That's but something that I noticed. She was so upset. I noticed that too, where I was like, recently, I think I tweeted that the, I felt like Lisa had forgotten that her father was killed and wasn't, they weren't like mourning him. And mm-hmm. then I realized that no one else was mourning any of the other victims either. The only person who was mourning anybody was Tony mourning Harry or whatever his name is. Uh, yeah. Because he was like, he didn't have anything else to do but to mourn his son. But I'm everybody else had forgotten. A little bit. Uh, Just a little. Well, she used crack, but it's fine. <laughs> she didn't bore. She became a drug addict. Oh but whatever. <laughs> but so for them to allow them to have that, I was I was really happy that they included them in it. Um, yes. To the extent that they did. And then like the speech about forgiveness and all of that, like it was just really. I really liked it because like it just really like brought together the community like everyone went to the dog and you know people at first because they were still thinking Mercedes was the killer and they were like why the fuck are we going here but like (laughs) it really just like brought everyone together and I love when he just kind of touched on like even though like you lost your parents like he he, you know he went to Jesse and he went to Liam he was like you guys are incredibly strong like you got that from your father whether or not he was the greatest person in the world but like you learn something from him and like you should think about that like I love that whole aspect of the vigil. Yeah. In the song. In the song. I just oh. love when they just like just like even even though I'm not a religious person, I love when they show characters who Same. have religion because yep. it's just like it's like that's real life. Like these for some people like that's part of their culture, that's part of their personality, that's part of like who they are. So I love when we get those moments. Yeah. I do feel bad for our Jack, though. He's just so dumb. Oh, man, I know we're not, we're only talking about Hollyoaks later, however. <laughs> <laughs> the episode after that, though. Oh, poor, Jack. poor Jack. I was like, oh my. First of all, there were moments where I forgot that Brita and Jack were even together because they did not play they that break up and they And they get back together exactly. so often. Exactly. And I completely had forgotten they were even together a couple of times. But man, his reaction after this whole thing was discovered, my God, I felt so bad for him. I love him. That is my grandpa, yo. Jack, oh man, I can't wait to watch that. (laughs) I just like, when she, what did she say to him? She's like, now I know why Frankie had that stroke. Yes. Yeah. I was like, you are the worst, Brita. Oh my God. Terrible. And how nobody saw any of this? <laughs> I just can't. No one. No one. I'm like, you don't think this is a little odd? Oh, no, it's dementia. No, that's not dementia. That's psychosis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I 
and Goldie knew that she killed Harry and she kept it a secret. Mm-hmm. And beat herself up for that the entire episode. Poor Goldie. Oh, baby. I just I'm I'm so curious to see how this is just gonna affect the McQueen family as a whole. Like they're already the town pariahs. Like how are they gonna like their aunt murdered half the village? <laughs> like what are they what are they gonna say to people now? Do you think it would be like one of those things where it's like, well, of all the people she murdered, we only really like two of them. So maybe we can give her a pass. Because who the it fuck could. cared about my back? Like, who cared about half of them people? It could. I could, I could absolutely foresee that happening on this show, <laughs> where there is a serial killer every few years. <laughs> <laughs> These people are used to it. Just like Cindy said, something always happens in October. <laughs> <laughs> like Grace said, I need to go on vacation in October. I can't be here anymore. Exactly. <laughs> So let's talk about something positive for a second. What do you guys think of Verity and Sammy? Is it positive? I enjoyed it. I mean, I enjoyed it, but I don't know. Sinead and Sammy. I know. But Verity is, she's fire. She is very magnetic. Mm-hmm. And you know they said this is her first acting role. Really? Yeah. Like I'm sure she's probably done like stage, but I think this is like her first uh, TV role. Okay. And I was just like, I was blown away. Like I thought, you know, usually when you hear that, you expect, you know, oh, like this person is a learning curve situation. But she slipped right in there, mm-hmm. right into Sammy's pants. I like. <laughs> I like how. Like she had that that weird effect on him and Imran, mind you. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was hilarious. That scene was oh, so my funny. God. <laughs> was like, take the box. It was like, no, it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> take the uh, box. No, it's your fiance's, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you take care of it. <laughs> uh, I'll say this though, Sammy. Sammy. Mm, Sammy's a bit of a man whore. Oh yeah. <laughs> I like it. It's fine, but goddamn! First, you meet Sinead in the middle of a freaking tornado, <laughs> and you screw her in the car, and then you meet this rando, and then you screw her too on the first day. Oh, I'm like, okay, all okay, right, all right, whatever. But they are hot together. What was that thing at the end of the episode with her though? John and I were talking about that. I think she was sniffing paint. See, here's the thing. I was watching an episode of My Strange Addiction. Or actually, I'm no, it wasn't even My Strange Addiction. It was uh, Intervention, where this girl had an addiction to aerosol cans. It's not yeah, an act- maybe it's that. Yeah, it's not an actual drug, but it gives some sort of a, a high that I, I'm like, how do you even detox off of something like that? So that's what it kind of looked like. But then it could have just been asthma. Like, I don't know. That's what I, so that's what I, when I first thought, I thought it was just like a weird asthma pump. And I was like, yeah. why, is she, why is she shy about showing asthma? And the John was like, oh, I think she's sniffing paint. And I was like, what? <laughs> Come on now. Don't, let's not start. Is she going to be a part of the drug story? Who knows? Uh, and she will be crazy though. She will be, imagine her versus James. It's definitely going to be her versus James, her versus Sinead, like. Uh, the uh, rivalries wanna, that was I want to see that. the battle, the Verity Sinead battle over Sammy. I mm. want it in my life. I really do. I really hope Stephanie is, you know, mm. prepared and yes. you know stable enough to come back because I need that in my life. Right I hope now. she comes back with the red hair again. Ooh, oh, yeah. mm, so it's two redheads fighting ah, over her. I would love it. Ooh. I would love she it. She just like. Verity literally, she just sl- eased right into the canvas. She like sure she did. just felt very natural. She I was sure like, oh, did. Tony has a little sister. Oh, this is Edward's daughter. And oh, all right, she's a bad bitch. All right. <laughs> done and done. Understood. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for it. And they said she's going to be like, she is 100% a villain. Like she's not a good person, they say. So we shall see where this will go. She better not hurt my Sammy, though. I'll kill her. 
I know. He doesn't deserve it. He needs some time off from the pain. <laughs> <laughs> she can be a villain to everybody else, but don't be a villain to him. Thank right. you. Right. He just needs a little time off from the pain. Mm-hmm. Like, after this whole anti-Muslim sentiment next door, his fiance leaving him, fighting against rapists and all of this other shit. Just, he just needs a little break. <laughs> But hey, maybe Verity will be that break for a little while. Who knows? Hmm. Could be. But I swear Edward said that he had two kids with his new wife. Hmm. So I wonder if there is another sibling of Tony coming to the village this year. They're not needed. <laughs> I don't need them. It's the 25th anniversary year and Tony I'm is... Not. He's the original character. There, he's gonna have a lot of, of stuff going on this year. This yeah, is gonna be one his year. I just don't like um, what's his face? Diana Edward. Edward. I can't. Ugh. Mm-mm. 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 Funny as hell. <laughs> it's not this episode. There was another episode before where Diane was talking about what she wanted in a man and how, you know, why she was attracted to Edward. And she was like, you know, he has to be sophisticated and worldly and successful. And, all. and as she's talking, I'm like, I was like, but you're none of these things. So how are you asking exactly. for things of this man? I was so confused. And I don't like to put women down. <laughs> I really don't. But I'm like, you're asking for all these things in a man. And what do you bring into the table? Tater tots and three kids? Like, I. Right. I, didn't, I couldn't understand it. I was like, okay. Three kids, all your nieces and nephews, all packed into one room. I was like, <laughs> come on. I was like, oh, okay. Shoot. Aim high, girl. I guess. I don't know. And she knows Tony is none of that, too. So <laughs> what is she talking about? Exactly. I was so confused about the whole thing. <laughs> God. Mm. That family just gets more and more confusing. So confusing. <laughs> if you really think about it. Got Scott living in the house. Scott is not even Diane's nephew like he thought he was. He's adopted. You had Tony who had slept with Sinead. Sinead living up there with her daughter. And then all these three kids who were triplets, I think. But then one was Tegan's baby. (laughs) Oh, Lord. Now Diane is sleeping with his daddy. Gross. whole family is a mess. And I I thought Sienna's family was a mess, but... The Hutchins and what's her last name? O'Connor family this is gonna be kind of crazy this year. But it could be fun if we fast forward through Diana and Edward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brita's death. Woo! So <laughs> that whole scene. <laughs> Like that whole confrontation in the kitchen. I don't know what the hell she was cooking or why she decided to start cooking out of nowhere. But probably cooking some bacon. That (laughs) probably that whole scene I actually loved. And y'all know I hate Brita. I hate Brita. I hate her rationale. I hate all of her exposition. But that was finally the first time that I understood her. Yeah. And I know she's good. Yeah, she's said it a couple times here and there. I uh, sometimes I listen to her, sometimes I don't. I'm like, you're, you're <laughs> the rationale is cute, sweetheart. This is not God's work. But and I, I absolutely, I'm not a religious person at all. But there's something about using God's name to justify murder that was not sitting well with me. The whole yeah. storyline. I was just was like, mm, makes sense. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think I like this. But. <laughs> That scene where she finally kind of explained all of it, and I could clearly see that she was literally psychotic. Like yeah, there was gone. no, it's just it was like she had a mental breakdown, and she's been broken down for a while. But it's like that was the moment where I think that, like, she lost any sense of her marbles altogether. Yeah, <laughs> Goldie and Silver were looking at her like, "Who the fuck is this?" Yeah. <laughs> They were so, 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 so terrified. And, like, rightfully so. Like, she's opening up about murdering their grandfather and then both of their fathers and just being chill about it. I think, like, finally hearing, like, what happened to Goldie's dad about, you know, how, you know, Silver did push him, but he didn't die, but she just finished the job. I was like, how? 
wow, how dare she? And then I know we've talked about that too, because we were like, why would, like, she loves Silver so much. Like, why would she want to send him to jail? Exactly. But like, she was like, yeah, you were going down the wrong path. She was like, your anger and all of that stuff. And it, and it makes sense because we've seen his crazy anger outbursts. And she was like, you needed this time to like really think over yourself. It didn't really help, but. <laughs> I feel like she, he was angry because of the shit that the circumstances right. she put his ass in. Was like she, he was just out here angry for no goddamn reason. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's definitely what she thought too. She was like, "Oh, I just brought an angry child. I'll fix him. Let me just send him to jail for 18 years." <laughs> oh man, I was worried that we were gonna lose my Goldie though. I wasn't concerned about uh I wasn't, I wasn't concerned about the lives of anybody else. I knew Brita was gonna die. Right. But I wasn't like, oh my god, could Tony possibly die? Could, could somebody else possibly die? I was, like, I was oh, worried for Tony. Really? I was because that would be a dumb Hollyoaks twist. Oh uh, no. It's <sighs> we already talked about it. It's Tony's year. It is, but still Tony. I was worried about everyone else. I thought I really thought like Goldie isn't expendable per se but they can get rid of her easily and people would be like oh shit Goldie oh man and then move on but like I don't know I I, I rationally I, I knew that it was probably only going to be Brita mm-hmm. but just like the tension of the episode had me just hyped up I was just like oh my god anything can happen and it really felt like anything can happen like Silver was not going to make it <laughs> Silver was down for the count in that burning kitchen before he rose up and stopped her with the knitting needle. Oh my god. That shit. First of all, <laughs> he is those needles weren't even human. sharp enough for that. <laughs> he that man is 300 pounds and six foot five. Oh god, that was all he needed though. was a little force to put into her little head and it was over. Oh my goodness. But, like, also, why didn't any of the other men that murdered her did, did this to her? Why couldn't anyone just break her frail little wrist when exactly. she was holding that knife exactly. and just cut her open? Oh, man. I liked how they made sure to make it, like, a point to say that Brita burned to death. Because oh, now they yeah. how that she died any other way. And I was like, because, you know, they don't want to send that hunk of man mm-hmm. back to jail so I was, I was like they're gonna find her body and find needles in her head what the fuck that was the, that was the smartest thing that mercedes did in a long time because i felt i felt like goldie was about to snitch too she was like officer man yeah. we stabbed my mom in the head i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> and mercedes was like i can't believe she burned oh, up oh my god, god. <laughs> that was a really good ending mm-hmm and the explosions, oh my god. <laughs> like, did they have just like explosives waiting at the pig farm ready to just blow up? Probably they got money. For real. I would Im- I would imagine that Brita had an exit plan for that farm. She had to. She couldn't have just left. Like, this doesn't make it so I think that she there's a possibility that she probably had that shit rigged. <laughs> she had to. Especially I mean, since she knew that people were going to be coming for her. She's like, let me take out as many of them as I can. Those exactly. heathens. Mm-hmm. But wow, we're in a Hollywood now without Brita. Thank <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I can't tell you how happy I am. I just, I feel like a new day has dawned. I feel like birds are chirping again. <laughs> I feel like the sun has... <laughs> And like I can't tell you how much I've hated this goddamn storyline. There are parts of the storyline where I've I have enjoyed it, yeah. just for comedic relief sometimes. And because she did knock off a couple of people that I didn't give a damn about or right. play, hate it, she but did overall, do God's work there. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, she did. But now, you know what I just thought of? Now that we know everything that she did, that explains why Homegirls in the damn um, New Year's trailer. Um, released from jail for Max's death. I completely <gasps> forgot oh, about that. Yeah. Completely forgot about that until I was like, oh, wait a minute. That's why she's back. Oh, mm. fuck. You're right. I didn't even think about that. Oh, that's going to be. I'm telling you. 
2020 is going to be a wild ride for this show. Yeah. Like, the fact that we had the flash forward episode last week and then now we have this and just... Oh my gosh. Where the hell do we go now? Like, with the, with the oh, meme of Miss Juicy, what the hell we gonna do now? <laughs> I don't know, man. That's so I crazy. Know. I know but, we're, we were supposed to just be talking about later, but can we talk about the trailer too, please? Oh yeah, my could, god! We could touch on the trailer. Why not? John's not here to stop us. <laughs> Let's touch on the trailer a little bit. <gasps> Whoa! What the hell? Like where, 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 how, where, and how in this is all? How is this all going to happen in a year? Not I, even a year. They only shoot. Four, they only shoot four <laughs> months ahead. This is oh up until God. April. <laughs> and I think what? it might not even be that far. I'm telling you, I think because do they do a spring trailer? No. They do spring trailers. Yeah, they do spring, summer, and winter trailers. So I think this might just be until maybe March, maybe April. We'll see. Maybe. Maybe. I I can't. It's just oh so I can't even remember everything. Like all the love triangles, the like what? I think I think one of the biggest takeaways for me was the scene with Martine and Mitchell. Oh my god. When he finally told he's finally gonna tell his mom that he's gay. And Martina's there for him, it looks like. Oh, yeah. I, I've never doubted that. That's why when he, he was so nervous about telling everybody, I was like, okay, I understand why you're nervous about telling your grandfather, but your right. mother has stated time and time again that she is pro gay. Right. <laughs> like, she all is the time. fine with it. She, all the time. Like, it does not bother her at all. So I knew that that's not going to be a problem. What might be confusing is. The plan that the pharaohs have to use this against them, like I'm, I, I get it. Your problem is with Martine, mm-hmm. so in order to hurt Martine, you hurt the people around her. But that's still your twin brother. Like that's not. He don't know nothing about you. It's not his fault <laughs> that you, you see, were given up. But you see, wasn't Toby hesitant about it? He, he seemed a little. That's what Celeste I think. Celeste is gonna yeah. be the one who's like she's yeah. clearly the mastermind. She is. He's the emotional. Mm-hmm. And wreck. she's just like, nah, nah. Yeah, no, he's absolutely an emotional wreck. You're right. <laughs> like, he, I love Celeste, but he's dumb. Like, I feel like he's the muscle in the situation, and he's not like the most intelligent. But she's got this master plan that, like, she's gonna take the Devros down. But why is she more invested than he is? <sighs> Because she has dealt with him and the problems that his upbringing has caused. Or so she's she... the real twin. Bum, bum, bum. No. <laughs> like, I uh, see people have been saying that from the start, but I remember that picture being two boys. Like, they were you dressed. Know that. <sighs> two it's kids 20, dressed in blue. 19. I mean, it's 2020. Oh, my God. I know. You're, you're 20. <laughs> 20. But the, the picture would have been taken in... 90 uh-huh. yeah 90 something i don't know i'd like i think that is how they describe them though in like the press releases when they came out like he's the muscle 100 percent, and she is the brains behind it and we've been seeing that steadily i've been seeing more and more of it but i just really wonder if he can forgive and forget why is she cl- gonna call to about it and like be the one pushing the plan I am so... I cannot wait to see more of them. I cannot wait. Uh, yeah. I just wonder what the end goal is other than to ruin people's lives, right? Exactly. Like, right. what do you want to get out of it? They have... Right? They, like, right? they have more money than the Devros. I mean, I, that's what they tell us. Yeah, know. fair. We don't know. But like, they appear to have more money. Right. I just, I just really... I cannot wait to learn more about these characters. Ugh, and they play them so well. They write them so like the way they've just been dropping them into stories bit by bit by bit yeah. by bit, just Who slowly. Hell? Who the hell would have expected that? That's how they're introduced into Mandy and Aaron's life. I didn't see that coming. I thought, oh, they're just right. going across the wall. I was like, wait a minute, she wait, hold on a second, right? Julia drugs her, and then Mandy her. sees some shit, and the, what? The, 
Because he was like, no, she can't leave here after what she just heard. I'm like, what did she hear? What, what's going I, on? No. <laughs> oh. I'm so curious. So layers to it, and that's why when I saw that in the trailer, just like from Mitchell to, to Toby and Celeste, just being like, where the hell is this all going to connect and how? No. Hey, and, and there's no telling, especially with this show. God. Literally no telling. And no telling when we're going to find out or how it's going to be. Like, that's what excites me the most about it is this is a story that we can find out on a Thursday. Yeah. Or it's something that this is going to drag out for like months and we just have no clue. And it's just oh, so well, exciting. Ashley and I just said we have this. At least we know that this is up until maybe April because <laughs> they only shoot around four months ahead. There. <laughs> so at least we know that much. We will find out some more of these things in the next few months. But God, I don't know if I can wait that long. What was your biggest takeaway from the trailer, John? Um, for me, really, it was just that a lot of exciting things are coming up, right? Like, it wasn't just one, I think, part of it. It was everything. Um, I was excited to see all the Hollyoaks later stuff in there just because I was ready for it, right? Like, I was ready to see this whole thing just blow up. Um, I love John Paul and James. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know that that's probably taboo I like um, too. but i'm excited like to it. see that i like it without c in the equation oh thank god i can't I stand like that there's going to be two gay love triangles without any of the same people same and it's not a big deal that's two gay love triangles and i didn't even think about that it's just they're there <laughs> warren the I whole really happy to see azim warren stuff too. azim yes yeah. uh, nancy getting stabbed Oh, shit. Now, that's how I know. I'm convinced now that that is Kyle's baby because I don't think that baby's coming to fruition. I really don't. So as soon as I saw her getting stabbed, I was like, oh, well, there goes baby. Stab the baby. There goes baby now. Fuck. Um, John, you're right. I can't believe I didn't talk about that. Warren? Warren. Like, and then the whole, dude, the scenes with Sienna and when she was just like, at the end, when she was just like, Warren, and he came out of the shadows. <sighs> Chills. What happened to him? Chills. He's going crazy. And what he's doing to our Brody? Oh, well, God. he deserves it. He shouldn't have fucked her sister. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Better not hurt him. That's my precious puppy. Uh, I know Ashley's super excited for Donna Marie's return. Is it wrong that I'm actually I'm actually okay that she's coming back for a minute? Like I don't need her to stay, but I am okay with her coming back. If she pops in and pops out, that's fine. She's funny because I think that this is just gonna mess Juliet up. Like that. That's all it's for, and I'm really glad. Her to become a crackhead. I hope so. Yeah. Well, is she supposed to be using or selling? Everybody's involved. Yeah, everybody's involved involved in this drug. Uh, storyline, but I can't tell which ones are users and which ones are sellers. I'm so confused. Uh, that new kid uh, showed up. Um, Jordan. He's right. Oh right. Um, what's his name's cousin? Uh, Sid. Sid's cousin. Yep. I don't like. I already I don't don't like him. Oh, I don't like him at all. But I'm excited for it. <laughs> like it fits. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that happened. Uh, I. The whole Jesse, uh, wedding okay. thing. We don't can just care. That didn't even happen. Yeah. Didn't, happen. didn't even see it. I don't understand why Jesse and Courtney are on the show, but that's fine. That's, that's fine. I've said it forever. Jesse can stay, but he has to be with Goldie. Yes. Jesse and Goldie were the perfect couple. They are so much better. Terrible. God. Ashley, what was your favorite part of the trailer? Uh, definitely the stuff with the Devros and the Pharaohs. Um, also, I am interested in anything that has to do with my precious Sienna. Um, I was interested in, obviously, you know, Nancy being stabbed. I was interested in that. But I, there's just so freaking much. I don't even know where to start with some of this. Mm-hmm. Like, Wasn't your trailer, like, almost four minutes long? It was, it was long. Fast paced. Yes. Stop at all. Well, did you guys notice the like super quick glimpses we got of Darren? And he's just like 
crying and it's showing up the uh, depression storyline. Like, there's just so much to this trailer. That's the one storyline that I, I'm not sure how to feel about it. Because I'm trying to, <laughs> this is going to sound so fucking insensitive, but I'm trying to figure out what in his life is so bad that he's spiraling out of control like this. Like, I don't, I, if they were to only focus on the fact that DJ's not his, I would get it. But it feels like there are times where he says, you know, if, if you know, me and Mandy break up, I'm not going to see DJ anymore, which leads me to believe that he actually does love that kid and wants to be a part of his life. So that's not being taken away from you. So I don't, I don't get it. Like, I'm trying to figure out, unless gonna... they dabbing mm. as him getting hooked on pain or something, I don't, I can't correlate what the hell's wrong with him to be depressed. I, I can't. I'm sorry. I don't get it. <laughs> they're going to have to, they're going to have to dig deeper. Because Darren's what? been through some shit. It can't. It can't just be about his current relationship status and like yeah. the kids in his life. Because Darren has definitely been through some stuff, especially within the last like two years too. With you know, with Frankie dying and then Jack almost dying. It's all been building up to this. Like yeah, they need like, to like need tie to it together. Back. Yeah, they have to really go back and like touch on everything, not just this part. Yeah, because I was like, mm, okay, <laughs> right. Like, meh. but just so you know, Ashley, once you see him crying, he cries. It's gonna be over. So You're good. Gonna be like, all right, I get it. It could be he could be crying because the cir- he missed the circus when it came to town, and he'll be watching it, and you're gonna be like, well, damn, I'm crying too. <laughs> mm. Was there anything else in the trailer? No, all I know is that 2020 is just gonna be really lit for the it's- show. I'm just so excited. Going from one strength to another. The last three years on this show, just creatively, have just been so... Just, like, major, gigantic chef's kiss to this Mm -hmm. show. Especially those last three years. Like, it's just been so cohesive, so smart, and quick, and and witty, and... Ugh, they just get it. And they're doing... Like, I just love that they're... You know, from Hollyoaks later to this flash forward. I love that they're just doing different things and just utilizing their whole cast and crew to like to innovate and do new shit. Mm-hmm. Soap operas don't do that. Mm-hmm. And it's it's weird because I feel like Hollyoaks now is a completely different show than what it was. Absolutely. You know, like it's not the the joke of the industry anymore like i feel like this show is 100 percent where it needs to be and it's able to tell stories in a way that no other show is like i was having a discussion with somebody on twitter the other day about how this show is able to do things like have two gay triangles and it not be a deal at all because It just it's there, but other shows can't do that. A triangle. It's literally just love triangle. Exactly. But watching it because that's what it is. But shows like the other three, right? The big three, can't do that because that's the show that your 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 grand watches, right? And we we still we're gonna push the the try the boundaries and we're gonna have gays in there, but we're not gonna just like have it really mirror real life because I don't know, grand just she's okay with one. Right. But she we can't have, have six. yeah, we can't have six, and then the other three exploring, you know, their sexuality. Period. Right. It's it's just it's really interesting I to just think about. I think it came from like you were just saying, like it, the way that it was seen as a joke. I think for a really long time, Hollyoaks also kind of considered itself a joke, right? And they leaned they leaned heavily into that, and they went balls to the wall. A lot of times, it's still entertaining and enjoyable. Um, okay. But, like, I, I do think that they really, they were just like, you know what? We're not getting recognition for all the hard work we do. So, like, let's just be batshit crazy like you guys say we are. They just went for it. But now they just, like, I feel like they found a good balance because they got recognized as the best soap and, like, all these other great prestigious awards. And now they're really taking it serious. And I also think that's maybe why Hollyoaks later was, like, a little more tame than it's been in recent years. Maybe just because they're just like, okay, like, let's, yeah, let's still be us. Hard. Yeah. Right, like, let's still be us, but, like, let's just not, you know, go crazy overboard like we did before. Like, I told Ashley before, 
This boy got ran right through with a samurai sword one mm-hmm. time. That that is crazy. Crazy. <laughs> but I think when I think of Brita's death, like it it's up there. Like it's one of the most gruesome, amazing deaths I've ever seen. Like when the blood comes out of her eyes, oh I was screaming. Oh, all of it. But that last, that entire last sequence, like I was shouting at my screen in a way I've never shouted before because I was so on the edge of like what's going to happen and is Silver going to die and then Breed is coming back and then like I thought this lady died twice and then bam. Oh, it was intense. So intense. And I think that's just like it just set the tone for 2020. You got the trailer, the flash forward, you got later and you're just like what the what could happen next? What are you what are you going to throw at me next? <laughs> I um, can't handle it, but let's go. <laughs> only time will tell. Alrighty. That's for sure. Uh, okay. So before we wrap up, how would you guys rate this? I'll you later. Um, I'd give it a solid seven and a half out of ten. Yeah. I'd give it a solid eight and a half out of ten. See, I was going more towards the seven. Like, it was not the... Be all end all, but it was it was really good, mm-hmm. really well done. And I think the main reason why it didn't get higher for me is because I'm just so over Brita. <laughs> good point. Oh, God. Like Follow I just was and- ready. <laughs> if they would, uh, hopefully they'll do another later that's like completely about the pharaohs and the devros, and they'll ah. give that shit like a 15 out of 10. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Because I feel like that's something that might deserve a climax. Like, that's something that has been teased here and there. But that's something that could be huge. Like, I would that, love, that like, could a, be enormous. I would love, like, a McQueen, like a, like a, what was his name again? The long lost brother. Nile. Oh. Nile. I would love a, like, a Nile I was thinking the same situation. Do we ever tell you about that story, Ashley? Mm-mm. So, oh, so good. Myra had this baby that she gave up for adoption. He came back to town. He was there for like a, maybe like a good year. Good year. No one knew who he was. And then he revealed himself to be the long lost baby. Kidnapped the entire McQueen family. Had all the kids lined up. Bomb set in this big ass church. And told Myra like basically you have to like pick which kids you want to live. Mm-hmm. And then blew up the church. And killed our Tina. The kids. Killed Tina. Which is, uh, what's his face's, uh, not Bobby, Max, his mother. So, like, yeah. that's the, that's the kind of level of event that I would love to see this climax, you know, come to. Because that was wild, Ashley. Like, that was like a, that was like full on, like, another thriller movie situation. That the was like pr- a regular Hollywood type of thing. It was. And the promos for that? I'm going to send them to you, like, as soon as we're done here. But, holy crap. Because it's each of the McQueen kids... Just talking to Myra, and then Myra asking, "How do I choose? How how do right. I pick which of my kids Basically I'm going to kill?" To tell her like, "This is why you should pick me to live over my siblings." Oh my god! Yeah, it, it was so good. Ooh, Ashley, I love that idea. Ooh. Hollyoaks later, the Pharaoh yeah. Endeavor. Nice, nice. But in the universe, it's there. You get, if anybody can speak into existence, it's you two. So got time to write it. Come on, y'all. Come on. Make it happen. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, thank you guys for listening today. It's been an amazing time discussing Hollyoaks. As always, if you are not watching Hollyoaks, why are you listening to this podcast other than to hear our amazing voices? Do it. Watch it. It's on Hulu here in the States. It is literally my all-time favorite show. And if you want a good time to get into it now is it oh yeah you can follow corian at not corian you can follow ashley at reckless love with a w please subscribe rate and review this podcast on itunes google play wherever you listen to podcasts because the more reviews and ratings we get the more likely people are to find us and listen to this amazing show you can follow us on twitter at our take media and rtakemedia.com is the website where this podcast and all of our others that we do are hosted. 
uh, because there's quite a few of them and so many more coming in 2020, uh, including some really interesting projects. So stay tuned for that. You can follow me at SoPwikiJohn. And until next time, bye-bye. Bye. Bye.